Are you prepared to fail? Half of all businesses fail within five years. Are you willing to go the extra mile to fail less? We have proven solutions. If you make the decision to start a new business, whether it's your first or your 21st, you will make mistakes, small ones, big ones, and you might even fail. 20% of all startups fail within the first 12 months. Would you like to be one of the 50% who make it to year six? I'm going to show you how to de-risk your startup and give your company the best chance of success. Give me just 20 minutes and I will change your entire trajectory. Later in this video, I'll provide you with links to free tests that will help you understand how you might be the biggest asset or possibly the biggest risk to your new enterprise. I'm Randy Kurt. You're watching Small Business Daily, and our goal here is to help you make more money and have time for vacations. Now, let me ask, are you a bit nervous about your new venture? You see, you're going to invest your precious time, emotions, and maybe a stack of your cash to test out a business idea. I have started over 50 businesses, created hundreds of new products, and taken products into dozens of new distribution channels, and the vast majority of those have resulted in a very nice income for me and my family. But everyone is different and everyone is like starting over. I'm gonna share every step of the process that I've developed to start up a new product or new company. I'm gonna hold nothing back. If you wanna substantially increase your chances of success, join me now. We're gonna begin at the very beginning. What should you be thinking about doing on day one of your potential adventure of doing a startup? Everybody's journey is unique. There are common threads, however, for every startup that can help you improve the chances of being successful in your new company. Right now, you should prepare to get humble because we're gonna be talking about how to get to know yourself. At the very end, I'm gonna give you six attributes of entrepreneurs that will give you a barometer of your likely level of future success as a business owner. And please add your answer to the comments below. That'll make it more fun for everyone. What is the primary motivating factor that is causing you to wanna to start a new business at this particular time? Possibly an opportunity has arisen, or maybe you've just always wanted to be in business for yourself. Possibly you're thinking this will make you more money. Maybe you don't want to have a boss anymore. Another thought is that you have a really cool idea that you want to get out there. Of course, possibly you're just not sure. Maybe you've got yet another reason. And if you do, could you put that in the comments below? Why We Do Things is the subject of a fantastic book, and it's not surprisingly called Start With Why. It's by Simon Sinek and this is, it's one of the most popular business books of the past 20 years. I've linked the book in the description below, and you should definitely read the book to understand more about the concept of starting with why. Every major decision you make in business will benefit from a serious examination of the why. Why do you want to be in business? Why this business? Why now? Why here rather than in some other place? I think you get the idea. So here you are at the starting point, and you've got a set of thoughts that are coming together into some kind of action plan. I'm going to suggest that this would be a great time to dig deeply into the why issue by getting some clarity regarding who you really are. After I did my undergraduate work in psych and then doing a bunch of navel gazing during the 70s, I came to a point where I felt I really knew myself. As I look back on that time, it seemed that this self-knowledge gave me huge amounts of confidence that has been a major benefit to me in life. I would suggest that knowing yourself has these components. Knowing what your skills, attributes, and talents are and what they are not, and then being okay with all of that. Also, recognizing that you should probably build on your best skills and attributes and talents, and then hire folks 
to do what you aren't very good at. In addition, you want to have clarity about your purpose in life and what really lights you up. Can you see how having an understanding about those things could give you amazing confidence and sure-footedness? So how can you get to know yourself? We'll spend the rest of this video with specific methods for doing just that. Allow me a minute of preaching first. Getting to know yourself might take a minute. You can't just take one test and voila. <laughs> I'm gonna to suggest to you that this process may be one of the three or four most important things you do in life. Would you be willing or able to commit 10 weeks or 100 hours to figuring this out? You'll probably spend 100 hours watching TV or playing video games over the next 10 weeks. Small sacrifice. The beginning of this process is to take about seven different tests. All of them are free, but I'll warn you that some of them will offer you a chance to dig deeper by spending a few additional dollars. Totally your call. If you take these tests without taking the deeper dives, you'll still gain huge amounts of clarity. Four of the tests are included in my book, Launch and Grow Rich. The Kindle version is free and it's linked below. Those same tests are also included in my book, When Friday Isn't Payday. Inc. Magazine called When Friday Isn't Payday, The Small Business Bible. That will also be linked below and the Kindle version is $2.99. The other tests are available online at truity.com. See the link below. At truity.com, you will want to take the DISC assessment or the Enneagram or both. These are highly respected tests designed to zero in on your personality type and how you work with others. In addition, take the big five test. You'll gain even more clarity into some of your underlying motivations and the way you do things. You might want to take an IQ test. An IQ test is by far the best indicator of your overall ability to achieve against a broad range of life's challenges. You can pay a lot of money to get a reliable result, or you can take the IQ test that's noted in the description. Once you have completed these seven tests, I suspect that you will have clarity about your future that will absolutely amaze you. It might even sour you on going into business at all. It might cause you to put off going into business for a while until you're much more certain about the fact that starting a company is exactly what you would like to do. How might you evaluate these tests to determine whether self-employment is right for you? I've spent a lifetime trying to evaluate this very question. Here are a few observations that might help you think through the decision. The higher you score on these attributes, the more likely you are to hit a home run in the game of business. If on the other hand, you score low on most or all, you still might be great at running a simple business with a few employees while making a good living. You'd still have the freedom and the independence that so many of us are in small business to get. But if you score low to medium, you might be smart to buy a franchise or a successful existing business. Another option would be to have a partner who's very high in these attributes. Finally, you might want to go to work for someone in a business similar to what you eventually want to pursue as an owner. Then open your company after a few years of experience. If you score high on all or most of these, you probably have no choice but to own your own business. It's just who you are. Let's start the test. First, are you curious? Most entrepreneurs are incessantly curious about everything in their sphere. They want to know how it works, how it can be improved, and whether there's a business in making a better version. They see unmet needs and salves for pain all around them. Second question, would you call yourself humble? Lifetime learners may often seem like know-it-alls since they tend to have an answer for everything. However, the lifetime learner continues to seek understanding and knowledge because they know that they don't know. When they stop being humble, they stop being effective. Third, do you have vision? Seeing the future in the world and in the nation and in the community and in your industry 
or even in the product line is a key component of the entrepreneurial brain. What will people need next year? What will they need next decade? What's happening in other, in other industries or services that might apply to your product to make it even better? Fourth, how are you as a leader? Are people willing to follow? Well, that's the definition of a leader. If you are able to enlist and passion and courage and then lead folks into battlefields that look a bit scary or at least challenging, you might be a leader. Leadership skills include selflessness, a servant's heart, and integrity. Next is passion. Big, audacious opportunities come with big risks. It takes a big dose of passion to break down, go around, or go over the walls that pop up at almost every turn. Passionate people attract passionate people as employees, as clients, as associates, and as suppliers. Finally, how courageous are you? Courage is closely related to passion, but it's somehow different. Do you have the courage to do the hard things required in owning and running a business? Will you walk in and meet with the top leaders in your industry, attempt to make appointments with major prospects, take on the giants of industry as competitors, and then fly in the face of tradition, break some rules and overcome defeat? If you want to maximize your success in business, you'll now take some more time to set your goals, then create a timeline for implementation, take stock of your resources, and plot the details of a strategy. Next Wednesday, we'll start by helping you take stock of your resources, such as your time, money, energy, connections, education, knowledge, suppliers, and more. Please take a minute to like our channel if you like today's video. And if you want to keep walking down this path with me and learn more actionable methods for improving your chances for success, subscribe and hit the notify bell. Some owners succeed without knowing what we'll be talking about in the next two sessions, but you'll have a much bigger chance of success if you follow through on these next several weeks of videos. This is Randy Kirk at Small Business Daily, and we'll see you next time.